so since you brought up Christ's statement in the Olivet Discourse, which is found in Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13, let me say something about that really quickly. Yeah. In uh, that context, uh, the apostles have come to Christ and they ask him uh, about uh, the buildings of Jerusalem. They, uh, he has just left the temple. Math- Matthew 23 speaks of Jesus just leaving the temple. And so they're on the Mount of Olives. They're looking at the uh, Temple Mount and the buildings in Jerusalem. And they draw his attention to them and they say, you know, uh, Lord, look at all these beautiful buildings and so forth. And Jesus said, I tell you the truth, not one stone here will be left on top of another. And that leads them to ask, you know, when's all this going to happen? And when, what's going to be the end of the age? And so in the context of that, Jesus says, with some variation in, in the different accounts, uh, depending on what the emphasis was of the gospel writer. Uh, but they say, uh, you know, or Jesus says, no man knows the day or the hour, not the angels in heaven, nor the son, but the father only. Now, there's several things to be observed here. In the first place, this isn't Islam, no matter how you interpret it. Jesus here categorically distinguishes himself from men and angels, and he ranks himself above them, right? No man knows, not the uh, not the men, not men, not angels, uh, and then he says, "Not even the sun." Uh, but how do we account for him saying he doesn't know the day or the hour if, in fact, he is the sun? And here we have to remember what it means to call him the son of God. It's not being used in a biological sense. The Bible repudiates that as clearly as the Quran does. You know, Muhammad errantly thinks that Jews and Christians believe that Jesus is a product of biological procreation or sexual relations. Uh, but but the Bible uh, certainly doesn't teach that. Christians don't believe that. Christ was conceived in his mother's womb by the power of the Holy Spirit. According to predictive prophecy, as well as according to its fulfillment in Matthew 1, in, in Luke 1, and so forth. Uh, so when the New Testament speaks of Jesus as Son of God, it clearly means it in a divine sense. In John 5, 17 and 18, for example, uh, Jesus calls the Father, calls God his Father, and claims to be doing what the Father does, namely works of providence, uh, sustaining the world, uh, working miracles, and so forth. And this leads the Jews to want to kill him, because in calling God his own Father, it says, he was making himself equal with God. And so the claim of sonship on the part of Jesus was a claim of equality. So how can Jesus, who identifies himself as the Son, and identifies God as Father, which is abominated in Islam, say that he doesn't know the day or the hour? Well, here, what's important to remember is that Jesus originally spoke Hebrew and Aramaic. Aramaic would have been the common language of discourse among Jews. Hebrew would have been the scholarly language, what they would have used in synagogue and so forth. Uh, Jesus obviously knew Hebrew. He stood up and read the scroll of Isaiah in in the Gospel of Luke, for example, and only uh, somebody who could read in Hebrew could do that. So, uh, uh, but in Hebrew and Aramaic, there is a form of uh, a, a grammatical form known as a, a causative, where when a person says uh, uses the word "no," it doesn't always have to refer to cognitive information or intellectual data. Uh, so, for example, uh, uh, this isn't an example of a causative, but it's an example of the word no being used differently than simply intellectual knowledge. In uh, Genesis 4, it says, Adam knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bore a son. Clearly, that doesn't mean that Adam came to have intellectual knowledge of Eve, and as a result of that, she became pregnant. It's saying that he had an intimate relationship with her, and that uh, produced a child. Likewise, in the book of Amos, God says of Israel, you only have I known among all the families of the earth. There it means that God loved them. He, he loved Israel as his special people. So the word no can be used in various ways. And I just gave one other example uh, of that. But when the causative form of that is used, what it means is to make known. Now, just to make this easy, I'm not going to, I don't want to take the whole time on this. So I want to get to Allah. Yeah. But you have an example of what I'm thinking of here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Now, Paul's writing in Greek, but Paul is a Hebrew speaker, and, and he's, he's obviously thinking in uh, Hebraic ways. But in 1 Corinthians 2, Paul is addressing problems in the Corinthian church, and he says in 1 Corinthians 2, 2, 
I determined to know nothing among you except Christ and him crucified. Now, what was Paul saying there? I don't know anything except that Jesus was crucified. No, Paul's not saying he's ignorant of who he is, of who the Corinthians are, or of a million other things. What Paul is saying is, I determined only to make known this, this, this great reality and the implications of it, precisely because this is uh, you know, something that you guys are failing to properly understand and apply to your situation. And so Paul wasn't saying he didn't know anything else. He was saying he wasn't going to make known anything else. Now, bringing that to Jesus' statement in Matthew 24, when Jesus said, no man knows the day or the hour, not the angels nor the son, but the father only, what he's saying is no one has the prerogative to make that day known. Now, contextually, what Jesus is referring to is the coming, his future coming, to receive his bride, he even goes on to give a parable of ten virgins, remember that, and, and of the bridegroom. Yeah. He's clearly talking about the coming of the bridegroom for his bride, uh, or of the groom for his bride. And uh, in that context, he says, nobody has the right to make that day known. In Jewish culture, when it came time for a son to go and get his bride, the right belonged to the father to declare that day to the people. The son couldn't tell people when that day was. And so all Jesus is doing in Matthew 24 is saying, I am the son, he is the father, it's his prerogative as the father to declare that day to men. That's why that passage doesn't refute the spirit knowing the day or the hour. Because Jesus is talking about the father's prerogative to declare the day, which is the father's prerogative. And that's proven, by the way, in Acts 1, when the disciples said to Jesus, are you at this time going to do, restore the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus said, it's not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has fixed by his own authority. He says, you just be busy about the work that, that God has given you. Uh, so it's the Father's prerogative to make that day known. So that's how I would address that passage. Uh, the classical way that people address that passage is to explain it in terms of Christ's two natures. I think that works in part because uh, Christ obviously had a divine nature and a human nature, and his human nature is really human. He slept, he wept, he, he died in his human nature. It was a real human nature. And so from that perspective, he could grow and learn and so forth. But I don't think that it's consistent with the context to make that uh, the interpretation because of all that I just said, and because that explanation wouldn't account for how the spirit uh, is not included there. Uh, because it's not talking about intellectual knowledge, but declarative knowledge.